Hey guys, and welcome back to the Learning Droid, and welcome back to another beginner's guide here on the Learning Droid. So a little while ago, I made some videos which were for making wire point tips, which were making wire point tips for a wire point machine like the machine I've got here. And what's happened is I've had some feedback and I've had some information about how it went and what people thought of them, what people thought were mi was missing and what people thought was really good about them. So I decided what I'd do is I'd make another series and try and make it look a little bit more professional, try and give some more of the right information without giving too much stuff that people don't want. So with this series guys, just like with the last series, make comments, um, tell me if they're too long, they're too short, tell me what I'm missing, tell me what I've got right, and it just helps me make things better. So. This is an introductory video for the series, as most of the Beginner's Guide series are going to have. And we're just going to talk about a little bit about what you need when making wire point tips and what you'd want when making wire point tips. So first thing you need, as you always will, is a wire point pyrography machine. And less wasps. There's a wire point pyrography machine and a wire point pyrography machine pen. Simple reason being is unless you've got these, there's no real point making wire point tips. The important thing is, guys, a lot of um, wire point pyrography machines will come with tips that take any old wire point that you make. Um, these are called adjustable or changeable tip pens. The way you can tell the difference, guys, is they will have little screw threads, uh, little screws, little bolts here on the end, which can take, and these are the connect points which can take just the unscrew and you just slot a point in. If they've got any kind of specialist connector or little holes but no screw threads or anything, then they're not wire point tips guys, they're proprietary tips. And personally I think you should always get adjustable ones, you shouldn't get fixed ones which have one that's basically welded to the pen and you shouldn't get um, ones that are proprietary tipped because adjustable ones just let you make your own tips, make your own style of things. Next thing you're going to need, guys, is wire. Always use the white, uh, always use the right wire for your machine. Not the white wire for your machine. The white wire, while good for some machines, is not good for all machines. Always use the right wire for your machines, guys. In this case, the manual on this machine recommends nickel chrome wire, and actually, the manufacturer sells these little rolls of nickel chrome wire. Uh, these are just standard wire wire from Scientific Wire Company, uh, and. The manual says you should use anything from 22 down to 27. I've got everything from 23 down to 26. So I've got one in from either side. And what I mean by 22 down to 27, guys, is that's the standard wire gauge. Now, in America it will vary, because there's an American wire gauge as well. But the standard wire gauge just refers to how thick the wire is. Now, to give you an idea, guys, a fixed pen with one of these points in will cost you about nine pound some will cost you as low as four a fixed pen with one of these points in that you can't change now this pen with uh, an infinitely changeable point cost me 30 pounds and it came with enough wire to make probably 10 points and also came with six pre-made points including a spoon point which is very very hard to make so that way guys you've got quite a nice little variety and so that's sort of five to nine pounds for a fixed point pen this is five pounds guys this reel of 28 grams of nickel chrome wire this reel of 28 grams of nickel chrome wire will possibly make somewhere between 200 and a thousand points depending on how thick the wire is I mean if you think about it guys, that's enough for a point and this is nowhere near being used up. This is an insane amount of wire to have guys and literally one of these reels will cost you four pounds. So even if you're experimenting with making points, these reels are a really good way to go about it. So we've got our machine, our wire. The next thing you're going to need guys is pliers. Now you can use full-sized pliers, 
but you'll find it a little bit difficult there, a little bit awkward, because you're using something very small, you're doing something quite small with it. So what I recommend is getting some modelling pliers. Now you can get them one at a time for between £1 and £4, depending on what quality you're getting, or you can get a set of five for between £5 and um, usually something like £40 or £50, once again depending on the quality you're getting. You don't need brilliant quality guys as long as they're decent. So the ones you're looking for guys are a wire snip, which is just a simple pair of wire cutting pliers. If you want to have a look at those, that's what they are. I can actually get them in shot. Where are they? Ah, there they are. That's what they look like. The next one, guys, is just a pair of normal blunt or pair of normal nose pliers. Just very normal average pliers. The next one that you really want to make sure you have, guys, is a pair of needle nose. These are really useful, guys, for shaping your wire. Very, very useful wire um, pliers. And then these ones are very rarely used, but can sometimes come in handy. Just a little pair of bent nose. In a set of five, you may also get a snip, and they're quite useful as well. But individuals and sets are quite well. The ones you really want, guys, are the wire snips, the normal ones, and the needle nose ones. That, guys, is all you need, apart from a ruler. And I'm sure you all have a ruler. If you don't have a ruler, you should get one. That's all you need apart from a ruler to start making your wire point tips. Machine, wire, pliers and a ruler. That's it. Everything else guys is added benefit, added um, bonus. What I've got guys, because I like to make pounded points like spear points, is I've got a ball peen hammer, which is a flat nosed hammer with a rounded nose on the other end. And this is just a little... Um, they call it a jeweler's hammer, but it's actually a little bit too big to be a jeweler's hammer. Jeweler hammer the jeweler's hammer is a little fine in this, but the manufacturer's called it a jeweler's hammer. And it's just a, a pretty basic hammer, guys. It, it was exceedingly cheap. The other thing you need if you're going to make pounded points is a strike surface. Now, you can get for, depending on, in America, you can get quite cheap. You can get little metal plates, square metal plates, on a wooden back that you bolt to a surface as a strike surface. In my previous videos, guys, I actually used a copper coin. <laughs> I actually used a copper coin out of a, well, not necessarily pure copper, but a copper effect coin out of a, a pack of tea. It was a promotional coin. It had a picture of a T-Rex on it. <laughs> but I used that as my strike surface. But considering I want this to be a bit more professional and a bit more easy to follow, I've upgraded, guys, and I have an ALO. An ALO is an anvil-like object, because this is technically not an anvil. There are certain requirements that you have to fulfill to be called an anvil, and this doesn't. But this is an ALO, an anvil-like object, and it gives me a nice smooth flat strike surface. It actually gives me a nice rounded surface on the back here as well. So that's going to be my strike surface. The other thing I've got, guys, that's going to help me make some nice points is some diamond hones. Now, whether you get a sharpening stone or you get diamond hones, it doesn't really matter. I like the diamond hones because they're smaller. They give you a smaller surface. You can still use them like a lapstone. You can still hold the piece in your in your fingers and run it along. Or you can hold this and run this along the piece. And it gives you a little bit of um, freedom, a little bit of variation in what you're doing. Finally, guys, a brass or, wire, uh, brass or steel wire brush. This is a brass and steel wire brush. These are brilliant, guys, both for making points because they let you um, polish up or you know, let you scratch up a point depending on what you're doing. But also, this is more important actually for keeping your points in good condition. As with solid points, wire points do get carbon buildup on them. They do get, um, if you're using leather, they get an oil buildup on them. They get quite claggy. And this sort of brush, guys, lets you use points for a lot longer. I mean, I know some people who say, who work with leather, who have said to me, how do you use the same point for as long as you do? Because you said that you use the same point for months and months and months. After a couple of hours burning, my points are too claggy to use. They won't heat up properly, they won't burn properly. And so they'll be going through that much wire every couple of hours with their pyrography. And yes, that makes it seem like not a very good deal. <sighs> Go away, um, little fly. 
but the fact of the matter is with the brass brush guys you can keep a point going for a really long time now if you're doing something very very fine like you're doing a photorealistic image or something like that I'd recommend cleaning or I'd recommend using a clean point a fresh point but for general work and for shading and things a brass brush piece just to keep it going for longer is brilliant will work fine so guys that's everything you need for the beginning of the journey into making pyrography points some pyrography points will need specific little extras like maybe a, a little wooden form to wrap them around if you're doing a branding point something like that but for now guys this is everything you're going to need for the basic pyrography tips and for the more advanced pyrography tips you add in these and these so guys basic pyrography tips machine pen ruler wire pliers and then we add in a hammer a strike surface whether it's going to be a, a flat piece of metal attached to a bit of wood attached to a desk whether it's going to be an actual anvil whether it's going to be an anvil like object whether it's going to be a metal coin that's been blue tacked to a desk as I used to use and honing stones or honing sticks for the more advanced points guys so that's everything you're going to need guys and what I'm going to be doing is one of the things that someone said was they'd like to see a outline image or an image of what the piece is supposed to look like done in very very simple graphic so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing multiple stages and I'm going to be adding in a graphic image of what the piece is supposed to look like it'll just be there for five six seconds and it's or maybe even less maybe three or four seconds and it's just going to be a, a black on white image of front view and side view what we should be seeing with the piece so guys thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next episode